Doug McDermott on our right, 21 Isaiah Zierden. We'll start with a statement from Coach Greg McDermott first. <coughs> I didn't think we could play much better than we played at Villanova, uh, but I'm not sure that we didn't play better today. Uh, we didn't have the crazy shooting night uh, from the three-point line, um, but the other parts of the game were were really good. I thought our ball movement was outstanding. Uh, you know, we we hung in there on the backboards, and for the most part, uh, were able to establish some transition game, which is what we really wanted to have happen coming into this. Uh, but we really, you know, Doug was obviously incredible. Uh, <clears throat> he has a way of stepping up for these games, and today was certainly an example of that. Uh, but our bench was really h huge in this game. You know, it was a three or four point game, and we got Grant and Jaw Hands uh, in foul trouble, and Devin and Isaiah and, and Avery and Will. Uh, you know, we stretched it from three or four to 13 or 14 right before halftime, which I thought was a critical part of the game. And then, of course, we got off to a great start in the second half. So obviously, Villanova is an outstanding team that was playing really well. Uh, so for us to be able to, uh, to do what we did today is a, is a big step for us. Questions from the students first. Dr. Tass, Bird today, uh, what in the words, what, 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 what that means to you? I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to explain right now, you know, just uh, it's pretty crazy, you know. That's uh, it's one of my idols. Um, but I was telling someone after the game, imagine if he had the three-point line and he stayed four years, you know, he'd he'd be way ahead of me. So, uh, you know, it's really cool just to be in that category with some of those guys. And you know, I'm enjoying it. You know, play with some unbelievable guys that you know find me um, in good spots. So, I mean, they deserve just as much credit as I do. Doug, do you agree with your dad that today might? <coughs> Yeah, I mean, I think so. You know, we we didn't have Ethan hit seven straight threes, so it's it was just really good team basketball, and you know, we didn't have that crazy outburst like he said. And you know, I think I thought we were good in all areas. You know, we found a way to just dig in defensively, win the battle on the rebounds. You know, there wasn't many areas where we struggled, so I think it's just as impressive. Look, I, I just feel Villanova played. It looked like they, they switched screens, obviously, but they. <coughs> Kind of try to play one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, what, what did you try? To, what are you trying to do when you, when you see what the defense is trying to do against you? Yeah, I mean they they guarded me very similar to uh, they did at their place. You know, uh, I got a couple more looks than I did there, and uh, you know they did switch ball screens and tried switching you know any kind of screen. <coughs> uh, but you know I tried to find the mismatch and try and uh, get good position in the post, and you know just feeling it from the three-point line. So. You know, it was just an overall good night, and uh, you know they, they're still a great defensive team. It's just one of those nights for us. Hey, Doug, could you uh, maybe expand on what your dad was talking about with regards to stepping up the defense game? You scored the greatest first one point in the game. I mean, was that kind of a, a sign that you were kind of going to be that? Yeah, I mean, uh, I live for these kind of games. You know, these are the best, uh, you know, especially playing against a top 10 team here in Omaha. I mean, I don't think any of us ever thought we'd see this day. So, you know, you got to get fired up for this kind of game and atmosphere. And, you know, it was a great start, and that kind of just carried the momentum for our team, you know, the rest of the game. Jose, you guys got 40, almost 40 points from the bench tonight. Just talk a little bit about what you guys tried to bring when you guys were in the game. You know, we just tried to, tried to stay ready. Um, you know, coach has always told us you never know when your number is going to get called, and we tried to uh, tried to do that the past couple of days is just keep ourselves ready and mentally locked into the scouting report, and uh, we just tried to bring some energy tonight. How big was it though when, <coughs> when Jaw Hands and Grant pick up those two quick fouls? Well, guys come in, and, like Coach said, actually stretch the lead. Well, yeah, we, uh, you know, we again, it was just focus. Um, we, we were ready when our numbers were called, and we just got to keep working. I'm, John Hens and Grant picking up those fouls were huge, but we tried to do our best and and picking up where where they left off. Hey Doug, you said that Larry Bird was one of your idols. <coughs> coming to be, you, you never saw him play because you weren't old enough, you weren't even born. How, how did that come? Videos, legends. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, um, you know, I watch a lot of stuff on YouTube. Try and watch as much stuff on him as possible because he's one of the greatest you know it's just like 
watching Michael Jordan, you know, I like him too, but it just happened to kind of stick with Larry and I like to do some of the stuff he does, um, some of his moves, um, but obviously uh, he's unbelievable in all areas in the game, but uh, just uh, a guy I look, looked up to. Um, you know, just going to continue to try and improve in all areas. You know, uh, I feel like uh, each year I've tried to improve one thing and uh, it's kind of paying off, you know, just <coughs> putting it all together. So, you know, I'm just I'm just going to go in there with an open mindset and not try to do too much. And, you know, whatever happens, happens. But uh, I'm just going to continue to work hard. Doug, do you get a sense of why Villanova seems to bring out the best in your team? Um, you know, just playing against a top 10 team. Uh, like I said, we don't get those opportunities much. And, you know, it's going to be a battle with them. Um, you know, they're a great defensive team. And we felt like uh, the last <laughs> game we played against them just gave us a lot of confidence going into this one. Um, you know, they're, like I said, they're an unbelievable team. Uh, there's still a lot of season left. Um, so we can't celebrate this one because there's a lot of basketball um, to be played. Two more for the student athletes. Talk a little bit about it. You mentioned the defense. <coughs> What you got out of that part of the game tonight? On our end of the, our defense, yeah, um, uh, it's it's been all preparation. You know, we've been flying around in practice. I mean, you've been there. We've been we've had our two best practices of the year. So we knew that it, we know that we can score with a lot of teams in the country. It just comes down to the, being able to guard on the other end of the floor. You know, all of our losses it's been because of defense uh, mistakes. So if we can continue to lock in on you know the scouting report and listen to these coaches, uh, we're gonna be all right. Yeah, I mean, I was more excited just to see Ethan hit a three, you know. I think he really needed that um, for his confidence, and, you know, it's great seeing him hit those. And, you know, I happened to get fouled there, too, so it's a pretty big momentum shift, you know. Even though we we're, were up quite a bit at that point, it's just uh, kind of a play that kind of sealed the deal. All right. Thanks, Thank you, Thanks. I just, <clears throat> I think because they took threes away, um, it created some opportunities for guys to get to the rim. And <clears throat> their shot blockers are the guys guarding the two guys they're most worried about at the three point line. So there's no shot blockers in the lane. Uh, <clears throat> so Devin got in there, Austin got in there, Grant got in there. Um, and that just creates opportunities. And again, you know, they're standing, <clears throat> you know, they were talking about touching Ethan all the time. Make sure you can touch him. Uh, you know, if you can do that, then Doug's going to have some space. And, you know, Doug plays pretty good in space. Well, we, we felt like they were going to do something to not allow us to shoot. I think we had 35 three point attempts at their place. Uh, and that was a big reason we won the game. And I, uh, we felt like they'd do something different to run us off the three point line and make us finishers. Uh, so our message to the guys this week is we have to be in attack mode. Against their pressure, we want to attack. Against their full court press, we want to attack. And we're attacking to score. Uh, so, uh, you know, I, we got some great contributions from a lot of guys, uh, and that's that's what made this happen. Great use of Larry Bird play. <clears throat> when you hear your, your son's name mentioned as passing and on the all-time chart, what goes through your mind? <sighs> I mean, it's really hard to believe. Uh, you know, this has been uh, it's been pretty cool for our family, and to watch <clears throat> watch him continue to move up this ladder and doing it the way he's doing it, and passing some of the people that he's passed is I think it'd be any it'd be hard for any father that grew up in that era to believe that their son is uh, mentioned in the same sentence with somebody who was you know arguably one of the best players of all time. Uh, but <clears throat> you know what? I'm most proud of is he just continues to work. He, he's, he doesn't get satisfied. He doesn't <clears throat> he doesn't rest on his laurels. He just just stays after the grind. And um, it would have been easy, having made the decision to come back, uh, to have a level level of satisfaction with his own in individual play. But he's so driven by helping this team win that he just uh, 
uh, he continues to stick with it. And obviously, it's a <clears throat> the game is so much more physical in this league than the one that we left. Uh, and he's the recipient of a lot of that. But he just continues to grind and play the game. And uh, obviously, it, it goes without saying, I'm very, very proud of him. Well, we went at him with some double teams, uh, depending on who was on the floor with him. Uh, uh, obviously, we've <clears throat> got a ton of respect for him, and he's a tough matchup. But when he when he attacks, it's also only two points, and they've got a lot of other guys that can beat you with three points at a time. Uh, so you know they're they're very similar to us in that, <clears throat> in some ways, you just have to pick your poison if you're going to go and really try to <coughs> take their front line away, you're going to leave somebody standing out there at the three-point line. And, and obviously, Bell got loose late in the first half that we were, we were disappointed with those two threes. But uh, for the most part, I thought we did a decent job of, uh, of defending the way we wanted to defend until the game got out of hand, and then we gave up some easy ones. Can you expand a little bit on that stretch there when Jay and Gibb go to the <coughs> Well, if I'm not the mistaken, end. I think we scored uh, 11 out of 13 possessions to end the half. And I'm not sure those guys were on the floor. Um, and just defensively, they were sound. Offensively, they were making plays that fit their game. Nobody tried to do what they can't do. They just played to their strengths. And you know, we got a couple lobs in there to Will for some easy baskets. Isaiah hits a big three. Uh, Avery gets a couple things going to the basket. He also hit a big three. Uh, <clears throat> so just, uh, you know, they, they they did what we asked them to do. And in that situation, you're sitting over there with two of your starters, and you're thinking, if we can keep this four or five point lead, let's rest them. But if it gets back to even, I was probably going to go back with one or both. Uh, and the bench ended up extending that lead. And that's, as Isaiah said, it's really important those guys prepare themselves. Uh, you never know when that number is going to be called. And fortunately for us tonight, they were ready. Greg, kind of, kind of put this one in perspective. You got a half game lead in the. In the conference, and you swept Villanova. So, kind of put this: how important might this be down the road? It's important today, uh, and obviously, uh, come March, I would think that two wins over a team as highly thought of nationally as Villanova is, is it can do nothing but help you. Um, but if I'm also not mistaken, I, I believe that Villanova has four of their last six at home, and the Blue Jays have three of their last five on the road. Uh, so there's there's a long road to go here, and one of our goals is to is to win a conference title. And this, this group's been through a lot, and obviously we we know that's going to be difficult, uh, starting with the game at Marquette on Wednesday. Greg, do you, do, you, do you consider or have concern about you know the grind of February a little bit when you're talking about going from Villanova to Marquette? You know, you're going to face Georgetown, and it's it's a little bit different. I know you guys have a ton of experience, but you know. it, it's different, and I think it helps that we're back healthy. You know, we were probably as healthy tonight as we have been before Grant's injury. And you consider him, he's getting a little better every game. Devin was sick. We've had guys banged up, Ethan. So you go all the way back to before the DePaul game on the road, we haven't been as healthy as we were today. So I, I think we're in a pretty good place in that regard. Obviously, a game like tonight where the bench plays well, it gives me confidence in them, gives them confidence in themselves, because that they're going to be important down the stretch. But the reality of it is all those teams we're playing are in the same grind we are. <laughs> They're traveling back and forth across the country, playing a, in a league that's really, there's not a lot of difference as we saw when we played at Butler uh, last week. Uh, there's not a lot of difference from the teams that have the best records and the team that have the worst records. It's, it's, it's very competitive basketball in that regard. Coach, could you comment on Doug, uh, how the game might translate to the NBA as you see it? I hope it translates well enough to get myself a corner, corner room at an old folks' home someday, maybe a suite. Uh, <clears throat> but you know, you know, I don't know, I, and I haven't spent much time thinking about it. Uh, you know, what what we've worried about with Doug is let's let's get better at something every year. And when he made the decision to get back, <clears throat> you know, my question to him is, okay, if you're coming back, what's what's your plan? What do you what do you want to add? Now, I want to be a better ball handler. I want to be a better defender. I want to. I want to get better at that in-between game, that fadeaway shot. So I said, all right, if, you, if you're going to come back, you don't need to come back the same guy you were last year. You need to add something because you've got a big X on your back. So uh, he's trying to become the best college player he can to help his team win. And then uh, the NBA stuff, it'll, it'll take care of itself when the time comes. And when he gets to that level, uh, he's smart enough to figure out a way to, to fit in at that level and, and impact the team in a positive way.
Thank you.